Hello, welcome to Cardboard and Plastic. Today's video, I got a small mail day for you. I just picked up a couple of cards, um, but really this video, I'm going to go over that I kind of finalize what I'm going to use to sort my collection. And I'll have that linked after I show my cards. Um, I'm really trying to organize my collection. It is out of control. I have cards all over my desk. I, I call this channel Cardboard and Plastic because, I mean, everything is in some type of plastic. I got PSA slab. And I got like, like big PSA slabs, right? And, um, I use card saver one, twos, and fours for things, right? So I have like tall boys. Um, I even like this worn spawn in the card saver uh, four. Um, and just like top loaders. So I'm going to make another video of like how I store like some of my cards. But I'm still like looking for something to store like those card saver fours, uh, my very large uh, PSA slabs, right? So I'm going to have to get some type of um, other container uh, for those. So let me go through a few of the cards that I purchased. And... The first one is, I mean, these are just pretty cheap cards. I have been buying a lot on Com C, so I'm going to ship those back. I actually got some cards that I really want to show off. But here's one first card I got in the mail. Um, I'm working on the Beam Team set. This isn't a card saver. I might send this to CGC. I, I already went down that path, right? So the, uh, the set of these cards and it's not focusing right out of 21 i already got like 13 graded by cgc i do have the shack in a psa slab so it's a little bit different but i think i'm gonna grade that car i looked it over a little bit off center but the surface is nice corners are perfect so um i just want to keep that i already went down that path so we got to I got to finish that. I got to get those 21 cards all in CGC slabs or CSG. And I still do have to get the Jordan. So that is going to be a pricey card. But I only like the beam teams. It can't be the members only. Because the members only, like you have to get, you get the whole set, right? I want, these are the pack pulled. And when I was younger, um, these were like the chase cards for Stadium Club. Like everybody wanted the beam teams. So really nostalgia for that. And I got two more cards I want to show. So this is part of my Smith's PC. I've been trying to get it cheaper, but I finally just got, I think it cost me like $20. Um, but this is... The um, the rave, right, for the Z Force, and they're numbered out of three ninety nine. So beautiful cards. Um, I had the there's two in the set, I believe, for the Smiths. I have the other one already, so I had to get this one. Uh, there was one on eBay for thirty dollars. I just watched those things. Hopefully, I was trying to get a discount, but then that was auction, and I finally got that one. By the way, I. I see less people buying right now. I'm starting to get cards a little bit easier. And this is one that I just got in the mail. And the person labeled this as a filler card. And I'm still kind of puzzled by that. So I'll show you this. So I got a beautiful 1953 Redmond Tobacco with the actual tab on it. So, great card. Now, the person labeled this as a filler card. Well, I mean, I guess 
It has a little bit of paper loss at the top. Does that really distract from the card itself? For me, it doesn't. I'd rather have a little paper loss there. And I, I like the tabs on these. I like to have the, uh, the full card intact. So beautiful card. And like, I think there's like a little tiny like surface wrinkle there, but I mean, it is. That's not a filler card. I, I, I don't know what's going on with our hobby right now. Um, but even the back, right? There's no paper loss or stains on it. So gorgeous worn spawn card. And I've been buying like a lot of like Yogi Berry worn spawn cards, just kind of cards that I've always wanted. So I'm going to kind of segue now from showing the cards to how I've been organizing my card collection online. In my last video, I asked people, like, what do they use to keep track of their collection? And a lot of people just said Excel. And I've been using Flickr because um, I like to trade and sometimes sell cards. And when I do that, I always like to have the images on hand. But with Flickr, you're limited to like a thousand images. And I've been over that. And I started a second account, which is like too much to keep track of. And plus, it doesn't do a good job of organizing the cards, right? Cards. It's just you can make folders, but it's like um, you can't really sort by years in them. So I wanted something made for sports cards. Now, I ended up going with Card Ladder. And the reason is I needed something that allowed for like well over a thousand cards, more than that. And Market Movers was like way too expensive. It was like $500 per year, right? So um, Card Ladder just had what I wanted. It had the ability to have all my cards, um, track, um, like make folders, kind of, uh, organize cars by year, and also allow me to have all the images there. So I could just link the images if I want to trade a card. And so the person has those. So let me just go over real quick what I use card ladder for. And it was $150. I think it's free if you pay for a PSA, like their premium membership, you get it for free. I might do that in the future if PSA prices ever come down and their turnaround times are decent. I'm still using CGC right now. I mean, I'm grading cards for like nine bucks a piece. So it's like half the price of PSA and SGC. Turnaround times are pretty decent. And I like their slabs. So I'm, I really don't care about value. Now, that's what um, Card Ladder does, though. It tracks value, which I don't use. So like underneath the dashboard, if we go down, like the total value of my collection I put in so far, I already put in a probably like five, ten percent of my collection is worth nineteen thousand. But a lot of the bigger cards I already put in, um, and profit, right? This is what so I I put in what my cards I paid for and kind of what they're worth now. A lot of this profit comes from me buying raw cards and grading the cards and getting some big grades, right? So, I mean, I bought 1980 Ricky Henderson top rookies and I bought them for 30, 40 bucks a piece and you get a PSA 8 and all of a sudden that's a 200 to $300 card. Um, I had a Kirby Puckett Flare Update Rookie, or XRC, whatever you want to call it. And I paid $100 for that card. Like after grading, I'm into the card for 120 bucks, and then it's a $1,000 card. 
So I did that quite a bit. So I really don't care about this. I just kind of just want to know what I paid for the card. And I kind of linked it to another card. I can show you just quickly like how I did that. But um, notifications, like it gives you updates like every day, like your card collection went up and down, right? I guess it's a card ladder. So they got to update you every single day on your collection. I don't care. I'm going to turn those notifications off. And they have like a bunch of different categories, right? The only thing I use is collection. So like I got my Hall of Fame rookies, right? So I can sort these by year, right? So these are my newest ones and these are my oldest there. So I go by the actual PSA registry for this, even though they're not all PSA, you can actually see like uh, C CSG, um, SGC and PSA, right? Next to each other. That's basically my collection. I have a combination of everything, a Frankenstein collection. Um, I'm going to send this card in for the Max Speedy, the um, card itself. Um, it's, uh, I might try to find a better copy eventually. It's a little bit OC for my taste there. But with the card, it comes in this like stupid plastic sleeve, but CGC since then has updated and they actually have kind of like um, PSA and SGC, they have a cutout slab for this. So I might just send it, in. I think for $5, they reholder it. So I just have my Hall of Fame PC collection. Some of these I even put into my own slabs. So it's just a way for me to keep track of everything. Why isn't that one showing up? Probably have to update it. That's weird. There it goes. So, um, I got to take better pictures of some of my um, raw ones that I just put in slabs. So, this is kind of what I've been doing. If it's not good enough to grade, I just put it into these Mag Pros, the Zion Mag Pros, and eventually i'll upgrade the card when i get one to grade and then i'll take it out and then i'll reuse these slabs but this is what i've been doing i use it as a way for my collection and if i want to trade or sell the card if you just right click it you could copy the image address and you could put it into a forum you can uh just save the images and just put it into eBay. So kind of just organize everything. Everything's ready to go for me. So this is very convenient. So I just break it apart into my different categories, right? So baseball, 1950s, I'm going to do 60s, 70s, 80s. I just got to eventually do this. So I'm in the midst of really organizing my collection. Um, I have to. Um, cards are just spewing everywhere in my room and in my office. It's out of control right now, so I have to clean up. And I'll make a future video of kind of the organization that I'm doing with my slabs and top loaders and other cards. So this is like the best way for me to organize my collection. Um, what I do for the price is there, so... Like kind of like the 1950 Tom Spears, I think I paid $45 for that card with taxes and everything there a while ago. And it says estimated value 6141. How you get that is you can actually just go to estimate value. They have a sale. So I'm just like type in like what card it is. It checks the sale history. And like the last PSA 4, sold for $62 and that was September. So I just plug it in and things been going down a little bit since I guess with the card ladder. So with vintage, uh, by the way, like you can either use vintage or sometimes they even have the player's name there that you can link it to and they have like a market with that. So 
that's all I've been using for, just kind of putting all the cards in that I have and just to organize them. So those are some of my 1950s. I got to add some more in there. But I don't use anything else, right? But for me, $150, it's going to be worth it for me because I would have to pay basically, I think it's like $70, $80 per year for Flickr. And this is for me is better, right? I can organize it. I can go by year. I can go by alphabetical. Go by player, right? So I can put all my Yogi Bears together, right? Warren Spawns together, right? Definitely need some more Ted Williams cards. So I just wanted to kind of show you like card ladder, the functionality for a collector. Um, be nice if it was free that I could just uh, put my collection in there, but you know, it's. I think it's a decent service for the hundred fifty dollars a year. Um, it just makes my life a little bit easier. And if somebody wants to see the cards too, I can actually um, link them my showcase, and they don't need to pay for it to see a showcase. They can't um, sort the cards. So like some of these, like I have like twenty five cards, and you got to go through them kind of individually. And I even made a folder for right cards that I have available for trades. These are like my doubles, so I'm just going to be organizing that. So in the comments below it, like I know like a lot of people are still using Excel and things like that, but it's some uh, PSA. If you have the premium membership, you get this for free. And if you get it for free, I, I would recommend using it. So again, as always, have a great day and keep on collecting.